So what exactly is a polymer? Even though we encounter them dozens of times a day in the course of our normal life, I still had to look it up. I forswore chemistry in college and I've completely forgotten what little I learned in high school. Now it turns out that polymers are made up of lots of molecules that come together to form either really long chains or really complex structures. And they behave differently depending on what molecules are in them and how they've been formed. So the variations that we've created here should prove that. And we'll take a look at them now. We have two examples of the plane, these two right there, and you can see little air holes have formed into this one. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's so funny. That's cute. <laughs> here we have the salt, and lots of liquid has emerged from this as it's rested here. And wow, that's really hard to the touch. Compare that to this, which is, hmm, it's like putty. You can stick, it doesn't bounce back, but it's very, very soft and malleable. Let's go down here to the cornmeal. That's got the same quality as the plane does. We'll pick it up in a minute. Baking powder has also, oh, lots of water has seeped out of this one as well. And that is much firmer, but not as firm as the salt. And finally, we've got the sugar, the really sticky one. It's not as sticky now. It has a slightly different quality to the, to the pinches that you can put into it. All right, let's take a look at them. Here's a plain one. Oh, it peels right off. Oh, look at that. Okay, it's very goobly, boobly, goopy. And you can continue to form it into a ball. Yes, it's vi and it doesn't stick to the skin. Now, here it goes. Does it bounce? Yay, it bounces. It's not, a, it's not a ball I would necessarily give to my dog, but that's pretty cool. There it goes, right back there. Here we go. Here's the salt. Let me see. Oh, it, that just clumps right up. I just picked it right up. It's just, it's much firmer. Oh my gosh, I can squirt the rest of the water out of it. That's wild. Oh, we're creating a pretty hard structure here. I'm going to put that down. The cornmeal. Like the plain one, it sort of picks right up. Ew, it feels, it doesn't feel good. It feels creepy. It's got that little bit of texture in it. And it forms a ball. Does it bounce? Yeah, it does bounce. So I'll put that down. I didn't test if the salt ball bounced. No, the salt ball does not bounce. Here's the baking powder. That's the one that sort of popped right up. And it is firmer and thicker than the others. Oh, and it squirts water out too. It does not want to hold on to the water molecules. Not at all. It doesn't form a ball easily. It doesn't bounce back. Let's see if it bounces. No, not so much. It just sort of plops. Finally, we've got the sugar. Sugar one rolls up. Oh, this feels kind of weird. It's not sticky like it was before. Let me see if I can get it to form a ball. No, it doesn't want to form a ball. It doesn't want to roll around in my hands. When it was sticky before, when we first did the variation, it, it felt almost like it was caramelized, like candy gets sticky. There's not much you can do with this. Let's put it, let's put it plainly. This just wants to stretch like taffy. That's it. Stretch like taffy. Now all of these variations had three ingredients in common, water, borax, and white glue. We're all pretty familiar with that beautiful H2O, but what about those other two? Really? The ingredient in borax is sodium tetraborate. It's a salt mineral of boric acid, and it's probably better for the planet as a laundry additive because it doesn't contain chlorine or phosphates. But it's not something you want to ingest. As a matter of fact, I put my nose into that water and borax solution, and it kind of reminded me of sulfur. But borax has a lot of uses, though. It's used in fire retardants and enamel glazes and antifungals and even cosmetics. White glue, like the Elmer's I used here, is described as non-toxic, so yay! But it turns out that white glue already has a polymer in it, polyvinyl acetate. It's already a rubbery synthetic polymer, synthetic polymer. So this experiment isn't really about creating a polymer from scratch. It's really about 
changing the properties of a polymer by adding different ingredients to it. So let's take one more look at our variations. A final look tells us that even though this plain one right here makes this great ball and we made one before and it bounces beautifully, at the end of the day it wants to return to its flat sort of <laughs> gooey, gooey substance. Here's the salt one and you can see now the water's just out of it and it just wants to crumble and it's kind of like ugly cottage cheese. The cornmeal, well it too, it's just awful. I can't stand this and I won't mind if I never have to do this one again. Blech. That just feels lousy in your hands. The baking powder also, it's still squeezing out water. Still squeezing out water. And you can crumble this one pretty easily. So that's a big change over the plane. That feels like pretty scary cottage cheese, too. Finally, the sugar, it also returns to its state of flatness. And it feels cooler and a little slimier than the plain one does. And again, you're not going to be able to form a ball out of this, and it's not going to bounce. It's just weird and rubbery. Taffy-like. There's that taffy again. So that's, that's it. There you have it. Those are our polymer experiments for the day. Thanks for playing along. You know, it's fun.